digipaydesktop.org. Um, I don't know, Master, if you can help me uh, put it in the website and put it in the space um, below. I don't quite know how to do that. It will be a lot of help. I'll do that. It's digidesktop.org, right? Org. Yes. I made a mistake. I remember in a trip to buy and everyone I put .com, but the correct website is .org. Yes. Uh, now, this project, it's a community fund project, which means that it's not going to belong directly to anybody. This project is going to be open source, it's going to be for the community, by the community. And uh, anyone has going to write, have mid uh, license rights over it. So anyone can edit the, the code, anyone can well, build their own versions of the wallet in the future. And that's the vision they're trying to have right now. The thing is that um, to have a project like this done requires a lot of testing, a lot of quality assurance, a lot of uh, people going towards the user, in the user design or the user flow that the application is going to have in order for new people to, that get into the um, environment are able to use this tool as easy as possible. Of course, I want to provide as most tools as possible, but it needs to be um, put into the application in the correct order in order that this uh, project is as scalable as possible. So we go back to the four phases that I mentioned before. These four phases are established in order to be uh, consecutive. I mean, one is going to be developed after the other one, and each one is going to set the grounds for the project to build towards uh, it. So it's going to build on top of the previous developments. The first phase is going to be the most important. Uh, because it's the one that is going to set the funding, or the sorry, it's going to set the foundation onto where uh, the project is going to grow uh, from that point. The first phase is going to implement every single uh, use case towards coin management, which is the ability to transact with Digibyte Coin, and that's the phase we're raising funds right now. That's the phase that the website is centered of getting uh, the funding to get it done. The budget for the phase one is around 5,000 US dollars, USD. Um, and it's going to be distributed among um, developers, well, I'm going to be the lead developer, the backend developer, and the rest of the work that I can't do myself through because of the development process, such as testing, quality assurance, UI, UX design, uh, front end development and other stuff. Um, those sort of, well, people that I hope just are going to work with me to start this project are going to pay, pay it to be at this money. Uh, the budget, as I said, is 5,000 US dollars. That's up to the, up today. The conversion rate uh, with big weight is around 7,000, 700,000, or well, around that number. Um, of Digivate. And the fundraise is being done solely on Digivate. That's the only mechanism people can donate to the project. Uh, allowing us, or allowing me, to ask funds for whoever wants to collaborate. It's not need to have bank account, it's not need to be in a country that uh, allows this kind of transaction or donation. It's borderless, it's permissionless. Anyone can donate as much as they want. It's no, there's no, um, there's no low limit, there's no high limit. There's any um, attachment, sorry, there's, there is no, uh, there's the, no uh, need to have like a minimum donation. You can even donate one day, and everything is going to sum up at the end. Now, to protect the funds, to protect the interests of the people who donate, I have established some uh, some measurements, some yeah, some measurements on how to uh, secure or to give people the security or the uh, at least the guidance that their money is going to use. It is going to be used towards the development process. 
you see, when you donate, um, at least a, a thousand digit, you're going to receive a little bit of the image that it's going to be a digi asset. A digi asset is an NFT basically on the DB blockchain or an asset or uh, yeah, on the DB blockchain. And with these little assets, you're going to be recognized as an official donator of the project. And by doing so, you will have the right uh, to decide where the direction of the project is going to be or source where the direction is going to be if a decision needs to be made. So it's like a governance token for the project. Uh, right now, uh, well, let me check on the on the DGSet Explorer how many of these uh, donations we have or how many assets of these we have. Yeah, we have right now around uh, 100 phase one. Uh, your DGS is going to be protected if you use this wallet to store your DGS. Now, you'll see that, or you'll find that this project um, it's well divided into some um, basic features. As I said before, the phase one features are going to be uh, coin management features, which are the features that are basically designed or uh, directed to the um, manipulation of the rate coin itself, um, such as, for example, the, uh, the, the ability to put in your mnemonic phrase, for example, from Konami, from Trust Wallet, from Ledger, from Trust, or whatever, and it's going to uh, generate the same private key, the same addresses, and you're going to have securely have your funds in the wallet. There's also the ability to generate your own mnemonic phrase, uh, the ability to encrypt your wallet, to communicate with hardware devices, the ability to communicate with some hardware devices. That's a point that I want to uh, put on the table. The ability to store DigiBet and Digi assets uh, or use every single aspect of the DigiBet ecosystem in hardware or using hardware wallets. Um, I had a solid example which hardware was I was going to implement at first, but uh, according to the last <laughs> to the last um, events with the uh, ledger recovery and stuff, that might change. I don't know exactly how this is going to be impacted, how this is going to impact the project, but at least the module for communication with hardware was is going to be there. So the implementation of new hardware wallets or specialized hardware wallets uh, it's going to be available um, just as a plug, as a as an easy um, plug in method. And, um, this is well, I, I'm not going to reach out into this because it's not yet uh, model or it's not yet constructed. But uh, well, let's just give it. A, there's going to be the possibility to include hardware was easy uh, within some yeah, for some this project. Then there is a hierarchical conservation, which means that you're going to be able to generate your classic DGBA addresses, the ones shared with the D and separate addresses. Um, they will have a multi-account generation, so you're going to be able to have like multiple bank accounts uh, of DGBA. For example, there, I know that there are some wallets that do not allow this. Um, well, they will sync from public uh, blockbook nodes, which means that you are not going to require the full blockchain in order to use your gate, right? Uh, a private key sweeper in order to sweep private keys uh, from paper wallets, for example, and the ability to have protection for your DD assets, which means the wallet is not going to spend any of your DD assets accidentally, so you're not going to burn them. And one last thing that I think is going to be a very important feature on this project that is going to be the ability to recover funds from the old Digibyte Morgan wallet. And this is going to be one of the strongest points of this uh, first phase. Because I know that the actual Digibyte Mobile world is, well, it's, it's not standard problem, which means that the funds can't be retrieved from a third party wallet. Uh, and I want this project to be a bridge uh, to start my, my writing from this wallet. I know there are some good tools out there, such as the Sweep from Mathic Analysis. And uh, well, uh, did you did 
this project in my desktop is only going to um, include the part of um, recover from the event mobile. So it's going to be, or I hope that it's going to be a good alternative. This ship is also going to be useful if you accidentally send the event, for example, to a Dogecoin address or something like that. So it's still a good product. Um, but I hope that for people that do not want to like lose their hardware, for example, their their secure uh, mnemonic phrase, it's a good option for them. And basically, that's it. The time frame for this first phase is around 100 days. I can put exactly how much time this phase is going to be because it depends on a lot of factor and how each uh, use case or how each feature is going to be developed. So probably 100 days is not going to be the exact time frame. It could be a little bit more. It could be a little bit less, but I'm not going to say that it's going to be less. <laughs> That's at least the baseline of how much it's going to take. So around three months, it's a good um it's a good, uh, or well, three, three to four months is a good uh, uh, projection on how the first phase is going to be. After the first phase is built, the other phases has a little bit less of budget and a little bit less of features, but they're built towards the ability to have a sole product that well works uh, for the high necessities of the digital environment the second phase implements all the feature related to the uid and identity um including a new communication protocol that i want to propose that is called digitoken um which is one-time passwords using digibyte uh well yeah the same technology as digibyte digid um, and the ability to log in with the yes on website. That's an option that it's out there already, but not a lot of wallets implement. I think Secure is that. Uh, I have tried, but I, I think it was under their, their features. The third phase is going to implement every single aspect related to DG assets. So you're going to be able to store your DG assets on this wallet. Uh, and not just that, it's going to be actually you're going to be actually able to create the assets on this wallet not just to store them uh well and also burn them but that's part of the transfer process oh by the way the uh, budget for the phase two is going to be around three thousand uh, dollars for phase three the DGS part is going to be around four thousand and finally uh the fourth phase is going to be an aptica system for the wallet once we have the three first phases, each one uh, oriented towards a digibyte pillar, the fourth phase is going to try to implement everything, all these of these aspects into the ability to build applications, actually applications for the digibyte blockchain. Right now, I have two well plan, which is the first one, a blockchain SMS app, which is just a little message uh, sending towards the digibyte blockchain. It's just a quick example of how communication can be made so actually, that's going to help developers to see how to use or how to code applications on the on the digital blockchain. <clears throat> uh, I don't say that it's going to be like the most revolutionary app, but at least it's going to be as a baseline in how to develop using DGP. And the second application is the non-custodial DGS market, which is going to be a Dex-like uh, marketplace for DG assets to be able to sell them using Digibyte. There's a third app that I'm not sure right now if it's convenient to implement it, but it's basically a node crawler, the ability to have all the list of nodes of the digital blockchain on your wallet, but that's not usually a feature that is on light wallets, so that might be gone uh, and replaced with another um, application that I don't know if we build right now. It's probably going to re we're going to re well, I'm going to rebuild if we get or once we get to phase four. That's definitely an option. That's definitely have what's going to happen. Um, but let's just put no color in a standby. Uh, and well, the the budget for this um, for this place is uh, around three thousand dollars. So that's basically the project. There are. There is an informative video on digibydesktop.org that tried to sum up every of this single point in, uh, in just a few minute video. 
once again, this project is going to be full of source, which means that every part of the code is going to be public. Uh, and everyone, everyone is going to be able to review it. Everyone is going to be able to fork the project and build their own branch if you want a special functionality that is not included. Uh, right now, we are uh, we have two channels of communication. Uh, the first one is a Telegram group where you can join, ask questions, and well, a lot of uh, well, basically communicate with me directly. And a Telegram channel, which is. Um, which is basically just a newspaper for this project. I'm going to publish there the message uh, of mess or messages that are relevant for this uh, for this project. And if you wonder if you have very specific questions about the very sensitive subject you need to talk about me about, uh, you need to talk to me about. Um, you can always reach out to me in Telegram. I'm a Renzo DD. Uh, or via Twitter. I'm a Renzo DB. And I'm always open to uh, talk, to chat, to interact with you, every one of you. It's always fun. It's always an alignment, and it's always uh, uh, it's always well, it's, yeah, it's always fun to talk with you guys. So that's basically the project. The first twenty minutes of this space was going to introduce that, and now I want to hear you guys. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear uh, your questions about the project. Remember that everything is going to be recorded. So if you made a question, or if you asked a question last AMA, you can repeat that same stuff right here, right now. And it's going to be recorded for anyone who wants to hear it again. It's always important to ask. It's always important to not just trust, to verify by yourself. That's at least, I think, the fundamental part of uh, being in a decentralized community. The US greatest uh feature is a decentralization but it's also a weapon of a double edge <laughs> so i'm trying i'm just trying to put things together in order to have one work among or be, that can be built between uh all, between everyone or every one of us between each other um probably not everyone is going to develop but a good way to help is by well, by getting together some fans just, or just read about the project, just uh, raise awareness about it. That will also help a lot. So the mics are open, Master. You know, you gave a whole lot of people mics. So ask me anything. Anyway, <laughs> made a question last space. You can, or please ask that again because the last one was on part of my bet. Uh, but this one it is. So I'm going to post this. On Telegram, we're going to put this on, uh, on the website for everyone here. I know that right now up to, we are up to 36% um, of the funds uh, that has been raised up to now. Uh, we were on 40, but due to last market conditions, it fell a lot. Or it's still about like 5% or so. Um, um, just a reminder that the donations are available in Digimate. So you will basically, it's up to the market and how these funds are going to be in your future because before they're all liquidated in order to pay the developers. Um, we can or I can start developing this project if we reach 70%, um, well, no, 68.5%, so yeah, around 70% of the desired funds because that's approximately the money that it's going to take uh, to pay uh, other people to be, to be in order to work for this project. And so a little bit of that, or a little bit of the rest of the money is going to be, well, just for to sustain myself during the development process, because I want just to have this as a part-time job to, for the next year or for the next month, at least once this project started, uh, so I can give like full of my energy to this. Because it might not sound like much, but a backend developer for the a backend developer for this kind of project it has a lot of stress under it because it's in game a lot of stuff, not just my credibility, but you guys, your fans, your assets, everything. It's uh, on game here, so it needs to be well done. It needs to be well tested, and well, that requires some uh, uh, also money to pay for some stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's around the the line where we can start working on this. 
without the need to have like rich full of funds, uh, seven percent of the of the of the budget. So, um, does anyone have any questions about the project or any controversies or any suggestions of what else I can like include in this? Uh, yeah, Jose. I was. Uh, do you have like I was trying to look it up right now and. Uh... I didn't want you to move on to another subject, but uh, do you already know when? So the the project it looks like it started uh, April seventh. Uh, what's a hundred days from April seventh? Because I th I think you're you're good. Um, I know we talked yesterday, like the, in the space, everybody kind of heard. And uh, I think you're good. I think that uh, we just kind of you know continue with your timeline. Is is my opinion. Um, but I'm trying to figure out, uh, when exactly 100 days is for, uh, Oh, okay. No. Yeah. The time frame, for example, for the development process of phase, it's going to be counted since the, uh, since the moment or since the time or the, yeah, the moment that the, uh, fundraising hits at least 70% of the funds. So right now, those 100 days have since start running just. But those 100 days is just an estimate on how much the development process of that phase is going to take. For example, if uh, yeah, if August 1st, if in August 1st we reach 70% of the funds uh, collected, then up to then is going to start the 100 days count. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit more of 100 days, so that's just a cost estimate or a time estimate on how much it's going to take. Uh, but since that's uh, a specific date, it's an example. Yeah. Uh, did I answer your question? It, it does. It, it, it actually clarified uh, what I thought. Like, uh, I thought it was going to be 100 days from when you started the, the fundraiser, but it makes sense. Once you hit, then it's going to be 100 days for the development to take place. And you're saying it might take a little bit longer, but it's not until we hit 70 percent. And and I think, uh, yeah, that's a good marker. I think that that was kind of a I don't know if you anticipated the price going down, but that actually kind of works out like it's not it's, it's not until the price hits a certain point because, you know, we still haven't even hit halfway point. So, uh, you know, I think that once it does hit 70, you know, we don't know what the market will look like. But I think that that's a good uh, a good trigger to move on to, you know, I guess for you to start building, I guess. Yes, and it's not just me. The thing is that, uh, the, well, I need to work here with more people. Um, probably it's going to be some of my colleagues that here improve because they know how to work. I know how they... Um, uh, how to work with them because I spent last, the last five years working with them in college. Um, uh, they are not going to be paying the event because, well, here is not Leon Thunder. <laughs> I hope someday, but not now. Uh, so people need to get, or people, uh, third parties from this project, people outside of this project needs to be paid on fiat. Uh, which means that sometime in the future, these funds need to be at least partially liquidated in order to pay. Let's say my, yeah, my cut of the uh, of the budget is around thirty percent. That's why the uh, boundaries or the uh, uh, yeah the boundaries or the the line is set on seventy percent because that's around the funds are going to be linked towards development or well not to the well, not to third parties. Uh, in this offer, and at least their money, I need to have like secure, uh, or uh, not secure, but in physical, like in in their bank accounts. So once they start uh, working, well, not in their bank accounts. Now there's going to be some process uh, to secure that they deliver in time. But I think, uh, well, I, th I think I'm trying to uh, clarify that at least the part that is going to be for pay. Uh, a certain level burst must need to be secure before the break starts. My cut can happen whatever, whatever with it because the other thirty percent is going to be uh, uh, it's going to be stayed on DJ. But I have no plans of selling that. But yeah, it's going to break my heart. I know that it's going to break my heart in a few years once we reach, for example, on our LJ high. <laughs> but this project, its project needs to be done during the bear market because. 
when the next bull market arrives, when the next voltage high is reached, uh, people are going to join the community and they're not going to find tools to work here or to stay here if we don't work with this or if we do not make this right now. And that's the priority here for when the new bull market arrives from where new souls, where new people came and joined us and learn about DGH, they need to have a good, um, a good environment or an application or a good, good options, at least, in how they want to manage their funds. Uh, so yeah, that's at least the vision I have for this project. That's why the uh, boundaries or the uh, uh, yeah, the boundaries or the, the line is set on 70% because that's around the funds that are going to be linked towards development or well, not to the not to third parties uh, in this offer. And at least their money I need to have like secure uh, or uh, not secure, but in physical, like in, in their bank accounts so once they start uh, working. Well, not in their bank accounts, no, there's going to be some process uh, to secure that they deliver in time but I think uh, well, I, th I think I'm trying to uh, clarify that at least the part that is going to be for pay uh, certain developers must need to be secure before the break starts my cut can happen whatever whatever <laughs> with it because the other 30 percent it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be stayed on digit but I have no plans of selling that but yeah it's going to break my heart. I know that it's going to break my heart in a few years once we reach, for example, on our LTI high. <laughs> but this project, it's a project that needs to be done during the bear market. Because when the next bull market arrives, when the next voltage high is reached, uh, people are going to join the community. And they're not going to find tools to work here or to stay here if we don't work with this or if we do not make this right now. And that's the priority here for when the new bull market arrives, from where new souls, where new people came and join us and learn about the UH, they aim to have a good, um, a good environment or a good application or a good, good options, at least, in how they want to manage their funds. Um, does someone has any other questions? I think it was. We're nice to talk about the time frames. I think that I did not specify that well on the website. I want to make that change. I'm going to try to clarify that on the website also. We were talking about it in the space, and I think that uh, there was, to me, it was like like a great lesson learned. Kind of looking uh, looking ahead, you know, for new projects or even for this one, um, where you know, if say somebody donated like uh, today, somebody donated fifty dollars, and you get it, um, and you know, you still keep that value, uh, whether if it's moving it into like a stable coin or, or fiat. I know that, uh, that, you know, that's not the popular option, but I think that looking at, uh, at the market from when this project started, that, you know, it, it slightly went up and then it went down. So I think that that's just something to consider for the future. Like if, if people uh, give you a certain amount and then you want to keep that value, that you make the decision of either, you know, uh, you know, selling some of that, you know, selling the Digibyte. To, so it's now actual cash that you can use to pay the other developers. But that's just something to consider. I'm not saying that that has to happen now, but just for the future, I think that's just a, a great lesson learned because, uh, we, we, you know, we don't know if it's going to keep, uh, if the price is going to continue to go down. And like you said, maybe, you know, in a few years, the price will skyrocket, you know, maybe. Um, but I, like, I agree with you 100%, like the tools, we need them, uh, for when that happens, you know, that we need to have this wallet and other, and other projects, uh, ready to go. But that's my two cents. Yeah, that definitely is in my mind. Uh, we were talking about that yesterday. Um, right now, well, well, I know that if the market hasn't varied since we started from raising in April, we well, are right now at least into 45% of the funds are already collected. We're 10% under that, which is the 10% that the bear, that the market crashed in last April. Um, probably my, if I knew this, probably my decision will have been like liquidating the funds, but of course no one knows the future. So if we reach a moment, for example, when we have 
like 60 percent of the funds collected uh there will be around uh um i don't know i don't have the exactly amount of digibyte uh but it's around three thousand dollars for example if we have six percent are very secure i will need I of course we'll need to consider if we want to keep that story value um in the money that we just collect so the protocol for that uh, will be to distribute both in assets among <clears throat> every um, every holder of the governance token of the project with a simple question explaining the situation, explaining uh, the options uh, with two options to sell or not to sell. And um, we'll uh, leave a time frame for the both sessions, maybe a day or two. And at the end, the most voted option will be how the fund will be managed. Because I'm not an investor or a developer. I don't know how the market is going to move. So let's just keep this on people's hands. If they have a voting asset, they have the right to decide what to do with the money. Uh, so if we reach a point where a significant part of the money has been um, collected, what is going to be done is well, we're going to make a voting asset. According to that, I'm going to either hold or sell. And if I sell, then that part is going to be uh, like um, froze on the website. We already have 60%. So the next funds that we're going to collect are going to be from that on. So the next $2,000 are going to be the one in calculation for the percentage in the, uh, uh, in the website. So the 300, 3,000, sorry, are already free, so already secure, are in my bank account, uh, and if they're ready for the development process. Um, well, thanks as well here. Thanks for uh, some stuff going here with Binance in Peru. Uh, I'm going to be able to keep at least 96 or 97% of the funds. So because we're here, uh, don't actually, or we can uh, claim money from Binance here uh, with peer-to-peer -peer training with zero fee commission. The only commission it will, will be like uh, 2% or 2% uh, or it's even less, I think, Binance Tech with change. So uh, we can, or uh, we can, I can get like a lot of the money, uh, or well, a, a good percent, a very high percentage of the money uh, and the record tours uh, the ball. That's a good thing. So that's what is going to happen if we reach that point. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Maybe he wants to uh, re ask well, about something I just said, or no, I don't know, uh, Jim, Joan, Mark, um, Ransel, Mar Marcus, um, Majestic Master Tweet. Oh, by the way, if you feel to talk, just. If no one's talking, just to start asking. Uh, you don't need to raise your hand because um, right now my cell phone is turning off, so I can't see if you raise your hand. Well, yeah, maybe I was able to explain everything good. <laughs> um, I know that. Well, also, I usually try to clarify stuff on my Twitter, so a lot of information that, or doubts that anyone may have, you can just make a tweet. Um, or even though uh, ask some stuff uh, on Telegram, and I will of course keep everyone updated on how this project is going. Uh, I know that there's a collective effort to try to get the funds together, and I will always be appreciated. Or I will be like thankful with every one of you guys for that to put the trust in me. It's been two years that I'm here in the Deere community, and. Well, the work for this wallet actually started way back in uh, late 2021 with the development of DigiWayJS, which is a library I made to uh, work with DigiWayJS that is capable of handling the three DigiWayJS pillars, um, DigiWayJS, DigiID, and DigiWayJS. Uh, so that library is public, it's for everyone to use. And uh, it's going to be used in this project. So that library is at least uh, enough to test it for the purpose it has. I want to, to have much more testing into it because it's always important to have that. Uh, and 
because well yes for you guys to know what technology is going to have this application or yeah this desktop application it's going to be a desktop application it's going to use uh web technologies in an election app and it's going to be multi-platform that's the reason it's using uh web technologies and uses election is to be multi-platform uh right now i'm 100 percent secure that it's going to work uh fast, just fine in windows and linux i haven't tried mac yet but well technically it's a unix like operating system so everything, everything must work just fine uh i already have one application working with this technology it's called DJID Desktop. You can look it up in my uh, GitHub. Uh, and there's another one that I made just this thing. It's called IPFS Desktop, which is just an uploader meant to upload things to IPFS. Um, the least, or at least, the, uh, the technologies that I want to use are the same, for example, that uses Ledger Live from Ledger or Binance application uh, for the Binance um, exchange. So there are, well, at least well-known frameworks on the cryptocurrency community. And if you consider saving your funds in a hero wallet, you always need, you're always going to need your approval to move funds and stuff. So it's going to be at least by that part secured by your own uh, hardware. I'm going to take as much as measurements necessary to secure the integrity of the application. Probably the website digibigdesktop.org is going to be used as a server to check the integrity of the application. Um, uh, it's just, no, it's not just an idea, it's how this application is going to be developed. And uh, probably, yes, just to be safe, uh, if I, I'm also going to provide like uh, testers or not, you know, uh, a, a little testing program to check if the integrity of your wallet is correct at any point. So you are sure that you're running the original code and no one maliciously changed anything to put you in trouble. Uh, that's a risk to just to what technology, but it's also a good thing because that way someone who has a little bit of knowledge of javascript of html and css are going to be able to um to check the code to understand what happened in behind the scenes and everything. that's just for you to know how this is going to be done and for the maintenance of the app for long term i'm going to try to at least keep it uh with the uh, current uh features for as long as possible but remember that this is an open source uh project so if you have like a feature that you want to be implemented but it's not yet scheduled you can do it by yourself and even pull make a pull request um what i'm trying to say that this application will not is not going to belong to me it's going to belong to the video community and that's how it's going to be built so at Based on that, um, if anyone has any question about the project, you can ask them out. To, I'm going to be here for a few minute, more minutes. Um, but if no one has any more questions, we just, well, we just can leave it here. I think I have fulfilled all of the items that I want to talk about here. Uh, so, the space is going to be open eight more minutes till uh, fifth. Well, yeah, eight, eight more minutes. And if anyone has any question, please feel free to talk, to ask, to just ask. And well, if <laughs> if we keep talking up to that, then it's going to be a little bit longer. But if not, well, I'm going to close it up there. So I'll be. I'm going to be here. Uh, thanks for you guys for joining. Uh, it's always nice to have a place where I can share my ideas, share my projects, and yeah, well, and it's going to be, uh, I hope that this project is going to be from a lot of help, or it's going to help uh, to raise the world, not just about the debate, but for self custody and for, well, for decentralized technologies and ecosystems. So that's a final idea which I want to leave space.
And as it's an open source project, it's going to be verifiable by anyone. So don't trust verify. And that's the idea of which when I want to close this space. So once again, if you have any questions, you're free to talk. If not, we'll close the space in seven. Minutes. So thank you guys for joining. And well, uh, that's been all for tonight. Hey, I'm Renzo and I'm Elizabeth family. I have my little Elizabeth desktop. May have like a like a like a pre-production and then a production was like already built on the blockchain and stuff like that. It's uh no yeah it's going to be a desktop application so you're going to be able to juice it on a computer. It's not going to be so it's not going to be built on top of a blockchain. It's going to be a tool to use the DB blockchain. So it's a parallel thing. It's not that one, it's on top of each other. It's not like it's built uh, on top of the blockchain. No, it's going to be a parallel um, a scenario where you can use the DB blockchain through the application. Well, like, look, like, um, I had one to know what, uh, how the production coming along. Um, protecting, I'm sorry, not to understand the question then. You gotta speak English. How is the production coming along and, and the this and stuff like that? Production, like, uh, when it, when it start, um, uh, produce blocks or, um... Oh, yeah, okay, how is it going to get synced to the blockchain? Yeah, no, the application is not going to produce blocks and it's not going to receive any blocks from external nodes. It's going to be a light wallet, uh, which means that you're not going to have this running 24-7 to have it sync nor is going to download the whole blockchain um, into the into your computer. It's just going to query nodes outside that already have full blockchain, and it's going to ask for the information that's already parsed. Uh, the DGA Foundation maintains a wallet called DG Explorer Info, um, where the wallets also, um, also host one, it's called djblockexplorer.org. Atomic Wallet also holds one. Uh, I don't have the exact API or the exact domain which it. And Tracer runs too. But they are not public yet. You cannot use it directly. And I hope that if we include Tracer Hero Wallet in the application, we can reach out to Tracer and ask them for open those nodes for us. That, that's definitely going to be one of my goals. So I hope I answered your questions. And I hope that I um uh, I, I said my that's part clear. <laughs> hey Renzo, this is Dave. Uh, I got a couple of questions. Um, so so you said that that the wallet that you're working on, um, the desktop wallet, is a light wallet, uh, not a not a hot wallet or uh, the next question is um, the within the wallet. Can I have? Can I create multiple Digibyte addresses? And will this wallet be able to hold V three assets? Um, yeah. Now, when you refer to the term on hot wallets, that uh, that is just a wallet that is connected to internet. Uh, under that premise, you can have full wallets that holds entire blockchain. Light wallets are only query nodes for uh, the correct UTXOs and SPB wallets that uses only the headers of blockchain. This is a light wallet. It's a hot wallet that does not store the entire blockchain. That's what that means. Second of all, yes, you're going to be able to have multiple ass, uh, addresses Sorry, in the wallet. It's going to be have a retaining uh, address system in order for you to use an address only once. Um, uh, you're also going to be able to have multiple accounts with the same private keys, which means that you're going to be able to correctly segregate your funds uh, between multiple uh, and separate accounts. So if one needs, uh, it's, uh, one can be designed, for example, for your work, one can be designed for your children, for your parents, for your, uh, for a project you may have, and everyone and all, every of those can be derived from a single private key, but uh, generate different numbers. 
And this world, it's going to have, uh, or it's designed to have access, or uh, yeah, access now, uh, the ability to manipulate virtual 3D assets, virtual 3D assets. That's designed to be done on phase three. Uh, right now, we are just working on phase one that is going to put all the foundation or the yeah the basis to, um, to build on top of that after uh, after it's done. But yeah, and you're not only being able to create the to, sorry to use the assets, you're also be going to be able to create them. So it's going to be an asset issue. Well, now I've raised another question: um, an asset uh, creator. So. Will you be able to do smart contracts in the future within the wallet? Smart contracts and UTXO blockchains are not exactly as how we see them on Ethereum. Remember that here we have we do have a script language that allows us to create the scripts. Those are like the analogy of a smart contract on the Digibyte blockchain. I do want to include a script editor on the future, but it's like to have a programming interface on it. So it's not, I didn't put it in there because I don't know exactly how things are going to work in the future. If you mean as a smart contract, the vendors that the assets have to sell your assets, no, it's not going to have that exactly it's going to be it's going to have on phase four uh the centralized marketplace which is a dex like marketplace for the assets so both parties must be connected both parties say, share their utxos they made a transaction together and is broadcasted to the blockchain to complete the process uh so if that's what you refer to smart contract then yeah it's going to have to some sort of that Okay, cool. Well, uh, I think we're going to leave it here. Thank you guys for joining. It's always a pleasure to talk to each one of you. And I hope this, well, we can get up this project together. Uh, the development process is going to start once we reach at least 70% of the funds. Um, to remain 30% is going to be my cut, so I hope the donation doesn't stop there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys for joining this space. Thank you guys for asking questions. And we'll, well, probably we'll have another one of these sometime in the near future, but I will always be joining the space uh, master and job. So we can, we'll talk about that there. My, you can also reach out to my Telegram, Renzo DB, or my Twitter, Renzo DB. And once again, thank you guys for joining, and goodbye. Have a good night.